Let's take a look at whether AlBr3 is polar or nonpolar. This is aluminum bromide. So the first thing we can do is we can look at the electronegativity difference between the aluminum and the bromine. So we're looking at the electronegativity difference between each of these bonds here. So we find aluminum right here and bromine right here. 2.8 and 1.5. So the electronegativity difference between the aluminum and the bromine, that'll be 2.8 minus 1.5. 1.3. So a difference of 1.3 on the scale here puts it about right here. So that would mean that aluminum bromide would be polar covalent. And we're only talking about the bond here, not the whole molecule. So each of these bonds here, they're going to be polar covalent. But let's look at the whole molecule. And let's do that in three dimensions. So the aluminum, that's the purple in the center, will add 1, 2, three bromine atoms, and they spread out to be as far away from each other as they can. This is called trigonal planar because it's all in a plane there. So if you look at the bond angles, 120 degrees, the bond angles, all of these bromine atoms are spread out equally. So each of these bonds will cancel out. So overall, we'll have a net charge of zero. So it'll be a nonpolar molecule overall because all of the atoms, they're spread in different directions. But each one of these bonds itself, that'll be polar. Back to our structure. So to recap, the entire AlBr3 molecule, that's nonpolar. But the individual bonds here, they will be polar bonds. This is Dr. B. Thanks for watching.